Greetings, friends, and welcome back to our Understanding Watch program. This week, President Obama received the Peace Nobel Prize in Oslo, and in his acceptance speech, he talked about the fact that the Afghan war was justified, that it was a righteous war, and that his deploying 30,000 more troops over there was justified. Now, the Europeans liked that speech. In fact, the German magazine Der Stern wrote that due to his speech, President Obama increased his credibility. Now, some here in the United States feel that Europe is not interested in going to war, that they are not preparing for war, that they wouldn't be capable of launching a war. But this evaluation is mistaken, especially since the ratification of the Lisbon Treaty the idea of a unified European army has gained a lot of momentum. And one of the big powers which is actually supporting this idea is none other than Russia. Let me read to you from an article which was published by the Russian paper Pravda, setting forth the governmental thinking, on November 27. It says, the European Union needs the joint all-European army. The U.S. administration is very negative about the idea. The European Parliament established the Rapid Deployment Force of the European Union in 2009. Last week, officials of the Italian administration put forward a suggestion to look into the matter of the European Army again. Italy's Foreign Minister Franco Frattini stated that Europe needed the army. The article goes on to say, Europe wants to increase its weight in the world and turn into a real center of influence. Europe has not been happy with its role of America's minor partner. Russia supposedly used its friendly relationship with Italy and initiated Fratini's statement to distract the EU from the USA. Europe needs to get rid of America's influence because the latter plans to betray its old-time partners for the sake of the new partnership with China. The Washington-Beijing axis is a real threat and Europe will be able to handle it only if it joins forces with Russia. Now these are interesting thoughts expressed by the Pravda or I could say the Russian government. So they are very much concerned about this new relationship between Washington and Beijing, a relationship which, by the way, is not going to last, because they themselves are interested in having a closer relationship with China. And at the same time, they are very much interested in alienating Europe from the United States of America. That's why they are supporting a European army, and that's why they are thinking that they could build up a friendly relationship with Europe. Now, stranger things have happened in history. We know there have been turbulent times, but then there has also been a short-lived non-aggression pact between Hitler and Stalin. As I said, it ended up in utter disaster, however. And the Bible does tell us, my friends, that ultimately a war will ensue between Europe and powers from the Far East. But is Europe actually able to set up an army? Are they actually able to build a very powerful, perhaps even nuclear army? Now, many think Europe is not, but they are again mistaken. Let me read to you from an article which was published this week by the Time magazine. It was actually published on December 2. Is Italy capable of delivering a thermonuclear strike? Could the Belgians and the Dutch drop hydrogen bombs on enemy targets. And what about Germany? Germany's Air Force couldn't possibly be training to deliver bombs 13 times more powerful than the one that destroyed Hiroshima, could it? It is Europe's dirty secret, the article goes on, that the list of nuclear-capable countries extends beyond Britain and France. Nuclear bombs are stored on Air Force bases in Italy, Belgium, Germany, and the Netherlands. And planes from each of these countries are capable of delivering them. The Federation of American Scientists believes that there are some 200 B-61 thermonuclear gravity bombs 
scattered across these four countries. Under a NATO agreement struck during the Cold War, the bombs which are technically owned by the United States can be transferred to the control of a host nation's air force in times of conflict. Twenty years after the fall of the Berlin Wall, Dutch, Belgian, Italian and German pilots remain ready to engage in nuclear war. The paradox is, my friends, that the relationship between the United States and Europe, according to biblical prophecy, will deteriorate. And that Europe will get involved in an all-outright nuclear war which will engulf the entire world. Jesus Christ prophesied that we will have nuclear war. And in the not-too-distant future, he said there will be great tribulation. A time which was never before since men have been on this earth and will never be again. But at that time it will be such a great tribulation unless those, short, those days wouldn't be shortened, no human being would survive. Now this is not possible unless we consider the reality that nuclear war will play a terrible role at this time. We read in the Bible that the cities of the United States of America and Great Britain and Canada and others will be utterly destroyed. My friends, terrible times are ahead of us. And we shall wake up to the fact that the Bible has prophesied a thousand of years ago that a United States of Europe with a powerful army capable to launching nuclear strikes will bring about, to an extent, that great tribulation Jesus Christ is talking about. He is telling his disciples to watch, watch world events, be alert to what is happening in this world, and also to pray constantly and daily and always to be counted worthy, to escape all the things which are surely going to come to pass. When these times of the great tribulation begin, and the end will only be that Jesus Christ will return to cut those days short, we need God's protection. How can you be protected otherwise during a nuclear strike with such dimensions that it would destroy all the cities, the major cities of the United States of America and Great Britain and many other parts of the world? We need God's protection, his supernatural protection. We have to make sure now that we live a life that we are going to be counted worthy of that protection when those times arrive. And my friends, as biblical prophecy indicates, they will be arriving sooner than later. Now, if you really want to dig into what the Bible says about these things, we have prepared several booklets. They are absolutely free of charge. They are also posted on our website. You only have to read them. I would recommend, and we have many pieces of literature, but I would recommend that you read the booklet on Europe in prophecy, that you read the one on the Great Tribulation, Yet you read the one on the fall and rise of Britain and America. And if you really want to dig into the prophecies of the Bible, you read our booklet on the book of Revelation, the mysteries of the book of Revelation. If you want to have a hard copy, all you need to do is to just ask for a free copy on the book of Revelation. It's actually a commentary explaining the book of Revelation chapter by chapter. Most people don't understand what the book of Revelation is all about. But you can understand one important key to understand is that you have the Bible interpret the Bible. No prophecy is a product of human interpretation. Let God tell you what is in store for this world, and let him also tell you what is in store for you, if he is counting you worthy to be placed in front of the Son of Man when he returns. Thank you very much for watching. This is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program.